Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at using the eraser tool in Illustrator and this is thanks to a subscriber who asked me to make a video on this topic. Now it turns out that the eraser tool has some secrets and we're going to look at those. So we're going to start off with this shape up here which is just a regular rectangle. It's filled with a colour, it has no stroke. The eraser tool sits here in the toolbar and it shares a position with the scissors and the knife tool. The eraser tool has a size on it so it behaves a bit like a brush so if you double click on the tool you're going to open up the eraser tool options and this is the angle of the tool, the roundness. Obviously if it's not so round then angle is going to play an important function. If it is round angle is pretty meaningless and we also have a size here so you can make the size larger or smaller and you can also make it respond to for example pressure if you're using a tablet. Now for me, I happen to be using a Mac which is really unusual for me and I'm also using a trackpad so I'm going to suck at all of this so just be aware of that. You can also use the keyboard to make the eraser bigger and smaller. I'm using the open and close square bracket keys here. I'm going to make mine pretty big so that you can see what's going on. You don't have to have anything selected to be able to use the eraser tool so let's just round off or wipe out the edge of this shape and you can see that my trackpad is not really helping me a lot here but that has now been removed so when we select on the shape the bit in the corner has been removed and we've got a path with lots and lots of anchor points. If that concerns you the number of anchor points then you can do things like select the smooth tool you will need to have the shape selected to use that and you can smooth off the results and get rid of some of those excess points. You can also use object path and then simplify and with simplify just click on the three dots to get the dialogue to show and you can then simplify it. You can see that we're just down to an extra point, an extra anchor point here in the middle of this side which we didn't have before. We had a lot more. We had 10 points, now we've got six overall in the shape. So just be aware that you can smooth things off if you need to. You can also remove from the middle of the shape. So let's go to the eraser tool. I'm just going to remove an area here by just sort of painting over it and where the white is has been removed where the color is is the rest of the shape and you can also hollow it out so we can create something like this so this is a shape this is a shape and these are hollow areas when you select over the shape you're going to see something like this but you can also just select individual pieces so this is a piece you can see that it can be moved around to change the look of the object that we're left with. Now if you don't want to be painting the way I have here and you want to use a straight line then shift and the eraser tool. So let's go with the eraser tool again. I'm just going to position myself over to the left hand side of the shape, hold down the shift key and drag perfectly horizontally. You can also go vertically. Position your eraser tool, hold the shift key and then click and drag downwards. So this only goes vertically and horizontally and on a 45 degree angle. So again holding down shift, clicking and dragging, I can drag across at a 45 degree angle. If I have multiple shapes stacked on top of each other and none of them are selected then the eraser tool is going to cut through everything. So let's just go through the middle here and we're going to end up with little pieces of everything. So there's a piece of orange here and green. There's another piece of green here and a piece of orange. Now if you only want to cut through one of the shapes you can select the shape that you want to cut. In this case I've selected the larger piece at the back. Back to the eraser tool and let's just drag over here through the other lighter blue shape and you'll see that in actual fact it has not been cut. There are two pieces for the larger darker shape but the front shape has not been touched because it wasn't selected. You can also use the eraser tool on a line. So what I've got here is a line that has a stroke on it. You can see it's got a 33 pixel stroke. Let's go and get the eraser tool and let's drag through this line to cut it off. 
Now you will find that the eraser tool potentially will destroy the look of a line. It can do some really weird things and also you can see that it's making a really big cut through the line, much bigger than it actually looks as a tool. Let's just undo that. Let's go back to a really small eraser tool. Let's go through the line and you can see that the line reforms slightly. What we're left with are in actual fact lines. So this is a line with a stroke and so is this a line with a stroke. So we haven't actually created filled shapes but we have cut our line into two pieces. If you really want to cut a line in two pieces, the scissors tool is a much better tool to use. Here it is sharing a toolbar position with the eraser tool. And with the scissors tool, you can just click on any point in the line and it will cut it off. And it just seems to do a better job of it. And also it doesn't take a big piece out of the middle of the shape. The knife tool just doesn't work on lines at all. Even if I select the line, let's go to the knife tool, cut through it, nothing's going to happen. So if you're trying to cut lines, the scissors or the eraser tool will be your better option. Now, not unsurprisingly, the eraser tool is going to work on lines stacked on top of each other exactly the same way as it worked on shapes. Let's just go through these and you can see that we now have multiple pieces of line. We've got this piece, this piece, this piece here and this piece here. Now if you only want to cut one line at a time but you don't want to have to be really careful in doing so, just select the line that you want to cut, go to the eraser tool and now I can just cut it very close to this orange line. In fact, I went over the orange line. It doesn't matter because the orange line wasn't selected. It hasn't been touched. Only this blue line has been affected by that eraser line. Now text presents a totally different issue for the eraser tool. Here I have a piece of text that's just been typed in using the type tool and even with this selected when I go to the eraser tool you'll see that the cursor changes and indicates to me that nothing I'm about to do is going to work. So I can drag all the way across the text and nothing's going to happen to it. However, if you do want to use the eraser tool, you'll need to outline your font. Now that of course means that the text is no longer editable, so just be aware of that. To do that, you'll select over your type, go to the type tool and go to create outlines and that converts your type from editable text into just regular vector object. And of course now the eraser tool is going to work perfectly on that. So let's just put a line through it. Let's move away and we've got different pieces of our text. However, because we were using text, you'll see that we've got a group here. So all of these little objects in here are inside a group. If you want to move them or do something individually to them, you have a couple of choices. Either you can make your selection from inside the layers palette so that you can select this object and do something with it. You could ungroup your group. So you could select the group here and then go to object and ungroup and ungroup all your objects. There's also a tool that you can use up here in the toolbar and it's the group selection tool. When you click on the group selection tool, let's just click away from the shape and then click here on one of these shapes and then go to the selection tool. You can see that we've been able to select that particular part of the text and we can do something different with it. So just be aware that to use the eraser tool on text, you're going to need to outline your font and you'll end up with a group of objects, meaning that you'll need to find some way of either getting the objects out of the group or selecting those objects that you want to do something with to be able to work with them. When it comes to working with shapes that have strokes on them, just be aware that the process of cutting through the shape is going to be a little bit different in terms of the result. Here I have a circle that has a stroke around it. Going to the eraser tool, I'm just going to erase through this shape and you can see that I've got two separate shapes and both of them have the exact same feature as the original shape, which is that they've got a stroke all the way around them. Now working with objects that have strokes is going to work exactly the same way as working with objects that don't have strokes. I'm going to just cut through this shape and ignore this shape. If I select the blue shape, then anything that I do to the orange shape is going to be ignored. And the only change is going to happen to the blue shape, but of course it's got a stroke as well as a fill. 
Now it's time to have a look at some of the secrets of using the eraser tool and the kind of key combinations you can use with it. So let's go to the eraser tool. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so that you can see it really clearly. I'm going to make a horizontal line through this object. So I'm going to tap and hold the shift key as I drag across the shape. Now let's only go part the way across the shape this time. Again, holding down the shift key, dragging in and stopping. And you can see that the result is that the erased part of this shape has a rounded end on it. It's got the same rounded end as the eraser tool does itself. Now you can also erase sort of square or rectangular objects. Again, back to the eraser. This time, instead of the shift key, I'm going to hold the alt or option key. And as I draw, you can see that I'm drawing a shape through my shape and raising a shape through my shape. It's rectangular or square. And also it can be sized by just moving it around, but it's also got a square end to it. It does not have that circular end on it because it's a different application of the eraser tool. Now there are a couple of things to be aware of with the eraser tool. One of them is that you cannot erase through bitmap images. So if you have imported a JPEG image, for example, you can't erase through that. You also unsurprisingly won't be able to erase through an object if it's locked. And you also can't work on symbols. So if you have a symbol in a document to use the eraser tool on it, you're going to have to break the link. So let's just go and grab a symbol. It doesn't really matter too much what it is. And here is my symbol. Let's make it a bit larger. Now I can't use the eraser tool on that symbol. Again, you can see that the cursor has changed to indicate to me that nothing can be done here. Well, with the symbol selected, if I go to the symbols palette, I can click here on this option, which breaks the link to the symbol. So now we've got a regular vector shape and any regular vector shape can be cut or erased using the eraser tool. So you can see that it worked perfectly, but only because we broke the link to the symbol. Before we finish up, I have more Illustrator training at Skillshare.com. When you sign up for Skillshare, you'll get access to thousands of classes there, including over 250 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you, which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer, and typically mine will be better. I also have Illustrator training at udemy.com and there's a referral link for every one of those courses in the description below. Please feel free to share these with family, friends and co-workers. So a heartfelt thanks to the subscriber who asked for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned things about Illustrator of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.